Hi family, welcome back to our devotion time. Today is May 3rd and our devotion is titled, We Cannot Withhold It. From Matthew 6, 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you today for this time together. And Father, we pray that you would use this devotion to help us to understand the depth of forgiveness. Lord, we thank you that you have given us your forgiveness. And we pray you would help us to forgive those who offend us. Holy Spirit, I pray for your anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible is full of people who learn to forgive. Esau forgave Jacob, and Joseph forgave the brothers who sold him into slavery. Job forgave the friends who ill-advised him, and Hosea forgave the wife who betrayed him. The prodigal's father in Luke 15 is a model of forgiveness, and Stephen forgave those who stoned him to death. Paul forgave John Mark, who had deserted him, and Philemon forgave On- Os- Onesimus, or Osinimus. I think I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> Whom can you forgive? Our ability to forgive others is proportional to our understanding of how God has forgiven us. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones said, Whenever I see myself before God and realize something of what my blessed Lord has done for me at Calvary, I am ready to forgive anybody anything. I cannot withhold it. I do not even want to withhold it. When we forgive someone who hurt us, it not only follows Christ's example, but it also brings healing to our own souls. The Lord alone can give us forgiving hearts, and when he does, we cannot withhold forgiveness. Praise God. I like what this brother said, that he does, he cannot withhold it. He doesn't even want to withhold it. I, I want to always be that person who doesn't even want to withhold forgiveness from another person. And I'm not, I, I'm not there yet. I'll be honest. I mean, I do forgive I, I don't know of anyone I haven't forgiven at this point, but I, when I say I'm not there yet, what I mean is I have struggled to forgive those who've hurt me at times in my life. And, and I can't say that my automatic reaction is to forgive someone when they hurt me. I have to pray about it. I have to deal with my, my own heart, my own pain. But, you know, forgiveness is tant- tantamount to being forgiven. Amen. To forgive a person for their offense towards you not only releases them, like he said, but it releases you, most importantly, from the burden of carrying anger and bitterness and resentment around for possibly the rest of your life. I have um, someone in my life who passed away, and I know on her deathbed she did forgive and come to right a right relationship with her sister who had hurt her so deeply in life and others who had already gone on to be with the Lord. I pray she had forgiven them because it literally um, soured her life, honestly, to the, to the end. It, it was to the point where she found no joy in anything because so much bitterness and resentment and pain had built up in her heart because she just could not let go of what people in her family had done to her. And um, I won't name any names, but it, it, was, it was very sad. And yeah, so let's go over and let's look at Isaiah 43, okay? And I want to... Uh, show you something here that the word says it's pretty kind of agrees with what we're saying right now if you go to 43 verse 25 it says I and this is God speaking I I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and I will not remember your sins okay God is saying here, I blot out your transgressions. I don't remember your sins against me for my own sake. Wow. So that, for for us to forgive somebody for our, our own sake, for our own heart, for our own healing within our heart, and for our own forgiveness from God, that's that right there confirms that even God says, I forgive, I blot out your transgressions for my own sake. 
and I will not remember your sins. Praise God. So that to me yesterday when I read that as I was doing this study, I was like, wow, Lord, I, I think I'd probably read it, but I, I hadn't put it to terms with forgiveness, you know, talking about this subject. And that just spoke to me volumes, <laughs> to be honest. So I want to ask you something. How do you know you've forgiven someone? There are a few ways that you can know that you've actually truly forgiven someone. For one thing, let's go over to Proverbs 17. Okay. And I want to ask you, how do you retell the story? And how often do you find yourself retelling the story? And when you retell the story about what they did to you, do you still feel the experience all over again in your heart? Do you still get your voice up and, and, and everything kind of takes you right back to that moment of pain when that person hurt you and when you found out that person had hurt you? And do you, how often do you repeat the story? How often do you find yourself telling on them for what they did? Amen. Let's see Proverbs 17, 9. It says, whoever covers an offense seeks love. But he who repeats a matter separates close friends. Let's read that again. Whoever covers an offense seeks love. But he who repeats a matter separates close friends. Okay, this could go also toward gossiping. Amen. When we go around repeating something, we're not walking in love. We're, we're, we're actually being a tool of the enemy to separate people, to cause um, dissension in people and in the group but it also can mean have you forgiven them are you are you covering that person are you protecting i heard my pastor talk about this the other day he said are you protecting that person's um reputation or are you going around you know just brandishing a sword and just tearing them down tearing them down telling anybody you can tell you know about what they did to you and how they hurt you and how what an awful person they are I know it's hard when you've been hurt not to do those things, but think about this the next time you go through a situation. Would you want someone, if you made a mistake or if you did something wrong to someone, would you want them to tear you down? Would you want them to rip your reputation apart? Or would you want them to walk in love and cover the offense? You know, I think, I think all of us would want someone to cover us. And not hate us because we hurt them. I've hurt people unintentionally before. And I pray that they didn't go behind my back and totally tear me up. I've had people totally tear me up. But I've made mistakes. I've been the offender. Right? So have you. We've all offended someone and we've all offended God. But what does God say? I will blot out your transgression. I will cover your sin. I will never remember it again. I will choose because for my own sake, I'm going to choose to forgive you. And for your sake and my sake, we need to choose to forgive that person. We need to cover them and we need to cover them with love. We need to seek to love people and not repeat matters over and over and over again because that will eventually separate and cause division. So let's see about this. Now, what else can we talk about forgiving? Part of forgiving forgiving someone is protecting that person. I said that. And I want to read what I wrote down. Just think of all the ways that you've injured God and done truly unforgivable things. How would it feel if he made sure that all our sins were aired for all to see? Wouldn't that be embarrassing? But instead, God covers us in love. He forgives us and never brings them up again. Now, my third question to you, let's go over to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 26. And we're going to go to verse 48. And start there. Now this, in this situation, we're looking at Judas. Okay? 
and Jesus. And it says, while he was still speaking, Judas came, came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Okay. Here's the question. How in the world could Jesus call him friend? Jesus knew what Judas was going to do. He knew. And yet he chose to forgive him. He chose to call him friend. So how are you? This is my question. How are you around that person who's offended you? Can you be around them without being awkward or avoiding them? Can you be around them without making sure that they know that you know what they did? <laughs> That's a tough one, right? Because you don't want them to get one over on you. You want them to know that you know what they did, right? It's so human to feel that way and it's so hard to let it go and just forgive it and be normal with that person to truly forgive them now sometimes the situation is something that they've harmed you in a way that they're dangerous to you that that kind of toxicity i'm not talking about you can forgive that person and you don't have to be around them okay sorry i have glue on my fingers from working with my stuff but you can you can forgive someone though without choosing to be around them because that person may be dangerous to you and you know the way you feel and, and how you live but if it's a situation where it's a coworker or a family member or someone you know a friend that has done something and you're having a hard time letting it go and you're having a hard time being around that person and they're not someone who's abusing you okay let's not put that into the equation then it's something that you should be able to cover that sin, forgive them, be around them, not poke at them and make sure they know that you know what they did, but that you truly from the bottom of your heart forgive that person. Amen? It's a challenge and it's a choice. I really truly believe that forgiveness, just like love, is a choice that we make. It isn't an emotion and it isn't a feeling. It's a state of being that we choose to walk in. Um, that no matter what the situation brings, we're going to let it, we're gonna, we're gonna forgive it. We're gonna let it go and not let it hinder the rest of our lives because it can and it does that to many, unforgiveness. But the biggest part is to do it for your own sake because we know that God tells us, if you cannot forgive your fellow man, how can I forgive you? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today and we bear our hearts before you, Father, and ask that you would search each one of our hearts. And please, Lord, let us know if there is someone in our lives or persons in our lives that we need to forgive that possibly we're holding an old sin over their head inside of our own minds, in our own hearts somewhere. Father, we pray that you would help us to walk like Jesus walked, to call our enemy friend, even in the midst of being betrayed. And that you would help us, Lord, to pray for that person. We know your word tells us that when we are good to our enemies, it pours heaps of burning coals upon them. And those burning coals are not something that burns them up. It's something that causes repentance in their heart. Those burning coals represent love. When we're kind to them, even though they've not been kind to us, you work on their hearts. Help us to be that person, Lord. Help us to forgive and to let, to let situations heal. 
Help us to walk in the holiness our Savior walks in. We praise you and we thank you, Father, and we ask you to forgive us for being unforgiving. And Father, we pray that you would pour out your grace upon us and enable us to choose to forgive today. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I love you. God bless you. Be careful today. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you tomorrow. Oh, by the way, we hit 100 subscribers for our family here on Kingdom Devotion. Yay! Today, we hit 100. Well, yesterday, because today for you is yesterday for me. I'm recording this on Thursday. So, yeah. Congratulations to us. We are growing. Our family is growing. And that's awesome. You guys, please like and share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And become a part of our growing family. I love you so much. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.